Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I have a really quick announcement before we get to today's interview. We are, I am interviewing a wonderful lady that I met several years ago. This, she's back again to talk about all of her successes, her success stories, all the different things, the challenges, the struggle is real stuff that she's going to come and talk about bundles and her journey with Amazon. And I can't wait to have her on. But before we do that, I do have a quick announcement for you. I'm getting very, very close to the release of Wholesale Bundle System 3.0. I'm so excited. Some of you guys have already pre-ordered and you're already diving into Wholesale Bundles 2.0 and you're learning and you're structuring all of your stuff there. I'm so excited for you. But this 3.0 version, it is college level education, people. Um, the current the curriculum is off the chain. My wholesale bundle system has generated me and my students over $20 million in wholesale bundle revenue. 20 million. Just pause and think about that for a second. The wholesale bundle system between me and all the students have earned over $20 million in revenue. I can't wait for you to see the new version. I have poured my heart and my soul and every ounce of energy that I've had to deliver the best course for you. It's the most comprehensive, user-friendly, complete Amazon FBA curriculum on the market today. The Wholesale Bundle system is going to be off the chain. And actually, it already is. It already actually exists. It's just not ready for you just yet. But this is your opportunity to get the Wholesale Bundle System 3.0 for half the cost of what it's going to be when it releases. This is the only time I'm telling you about this as well. This is only for podcast listeners. You're not going to see this in an email. You're not going to see this on social. This is an exclusive podcast only offer for those of you guys that are serious about changing your income level. If you are serious about making Wholesale Bundles your reality and increasing your income on Amazon, this is going to be an exclusive offer for you only. It's half the cost that it's going to be in about six weeks when it's released. So you will have access right now to Wholesale Bundles 2.0. And when it's released, you get all of the brand new material you can dive into at half the cost. Now you're going to learn how to contact and set up wholesale supplier accounts. You're going to learn how to set up your business properly if you haven't already done so. And then you are going to learn a step-by-step -step research process to find and curate wholesale bundles. And then you're going to learn how to list them. And then you're going to learn how to uh, get G10 exemptions and trademarks and brand registry. Y'all, comprehensive, complete FBA curriculum. This is college level, folks. Did you know that the average college credit, one credit hour, takes 42 hours of training and cost $2,355 for one credit hour in college? Did you know that? That's thank you to our friends at educationdata.com for that. So you guys can look up some more statistics on that. But the average one single credit hour in college costs $2,355 plus materials and books. So just think about that. But can that college credit, that one credit hour, have the potential to earn you over a million dollars? Because that's what I've done with the Wholesale Bundle system. I created it, I executed it over and over, and then refined it so that I could teach it all to you. And me and my students are, you'll hear about one today. You're gonna talk to her. That are creating success stories of their own with the Wholesale Bundle system. So if you are ready, if it's time for you to take college level education that can bring you millions of dollars in potential revenue, the time is now. Mommyincome.com forward slash system. Once the release of the course is there, this price will never be available again. And I tell you, it's not $23.55 like it would be at a college education level. Yet the curriculum meets that standard. So if you're ready, mommyincome.com forward slash system. 
And now we're going to talk to Ryan. Ryan has been on the show before. She's an incredible guest. We, uh, she's, she's a Wholesale Bundle student. She took the Wholesale Bundles course in 2018 and then came to a workshop in 2019. And she has done nothing but succeed since then. She's been on the show before and she's coming back to let her let us know all the different successes that she's had so far and the most important things in life that she's been able to make time for because she has a well refined business. Now to catch up on Ryan's previous episode, go to your favorite podcast app, find the Amazon files, type in Ryan in the podcast search box and give it a listen. And then you can dive into this or listen to that before so you can get some more of a backstory. But now let's welcome Ryan back to the show. Ryan, welcome back to the show. I'm so glad to have you back again. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. How are you? I am fabulous, and it's good to have you back now. I know it's been several years since you've been on the show and even more years since you've been kind of doing Amazon. So for the people that haven't listened to the last episode, I already told them to kind of go back and listen to that. But um, just give us a little bit of a intro, a little bit about yourself and your family. Sure. So um, I started selling online, I think in July of 2017. Um, I joined you in person for a workshop, I think in uh, January 2020 at the Atlanta Mart. Um, and outside of that, um, actually, that was 2019. Now that I'm 2019. It, I'm like, Am I wrong? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, it's oh, been I'm almost off. four I'm years. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, since then I've been busy. I've got, uh, now two small children. Last time we did a podcast, I only had one mm -hmm. and, um, it's been a lot of fun. I, I have to say, not only am I enjoying what I'm able to do with my business, but I'm also enjoying what it lets me do outside of my business too. Um, you know, and it's definitely, there've been struggles, um, covid presented, I think everybody, a variety of challenges and not everybody had the same challenges or at the same time. Um, but it's, you know, you just keep moving forward. I think. Yeah. Roller coaster. So, okay, let's, let's back up a little bit. So you started in 2017, so that's, you know, nearly five years now. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm sure you have evolved. What did you start with when you first started on Amazon and what, like, let's just go over that briefly of what caused you to start looking for something to do like Amazon or something else? Was it just like personal or was it like a job you hated? Um, it was, a job that wasn't fitting um, my life as it was changing. And um, I didn't really want to go find uh, the same boat with a different name, right. so to speak. Like, I I knew that, that regardless of what I was doing, working in a corporate setting for whoever, there's still a certain set of expectations that come with that. And um, oftentimes there is some flexibility, but sometimes there's really not. And it doesn't matter if that's when you really need it. Um, so I started looking for something that would, um, not only allow me a little more flexibility in terms of geography and time, um, but also something that would allow me to grow something for myself. Um, I was feeling a little, uh, underwhelmed by the response I was receiving by making everybody else money. So um, I decided to try it for myself. I love that you said that because honestly, I think that sometimes when we're just in a regular job, we don't actually think about that for a second and realize that like this person pays me a wage, but then like they're on top and then there's other people and that like somebody there is making big money. And like, where can I get a little bit more of that? And you're like in corporate, like I've never been in corporate. So um, this is all secondhand experience here, but um you know, with that, there's always some ladder to climb. There's always some sort of somebody you have to, you know, kiss up to for a while to kind of grow and go there. And you still only get a portion of the company profit there. So it's like, why not see what I can do for myself? Because for the same hours, I could be making even double that without all the BS. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, it was um, something that I kind of wanted to just see if it would work. And so far, uh, it's stuck, you know, <laughs> I mean, Nothing's perfect, but um, there are, there's definitely been more pluses than minuses, so. 
All right, let's talk about your Amazon journey. Because after you've decided that you're, you're going to discover this, did you jump right into like wholesale bundling or did you try some other things first? No, I started with retail arbitrage like so many other people. Um, and I, while I enjoyed the thrill of the hunts, there came a point when I realized I just couldn't shop anymore. Yeah. That um, geographically, I was at my limits um, without you know, without building a whole team and diversifying where those people are, like there is only, so, there are only so many stores and there is only so much stock. Um, you can only clear so many shelves. Um, so I, I just hit a point where the time to, that I needed to put in to grow to the next step was just not uh, something I was either willing or wanting, or maybe possibly not even physically possible to do by myself. Um, and I've made the choice kind of to kind of stay by myself and, um, not that I don't have partners that help me, but none of them work for me. So I'm not really managing a whole lot of people, um, which, um, I've done in the past and it has its pluses and its minuses. You get someone you can depend on, but you also have a lot more to do, um, and it doesn't wait. Mm -hmm. So, um, to keep the flexibility, I've decided not to directly hire anybody. Um, do you, have you outsourced anything at all, like freelancing or in a prep facility or have any sort of VAs that help you? Yeah. So I have a prep center that I think I brought on in the fall of 19, um, when I really started doing bundles. Um, and before that I did have somebody part-time helping me. Um, and then I realized it was getting to the point where I was going to have to start having multiple people. And that felt like a lot more to manage directly. So I went with a prep center um, and I've been with them since. And they're fabulous. It's probably the easiest step you can take to scale, I think, in terms of the, the time put in and the payout you get from it. Um, and then I also have a, v a very part time VA. She works about um on average five hours a week. And she's been with me since, um, well, since lockdown, mm -hmm. I started with her, um, hired her and not knowing that I was going to be stuck at home with everybody. <laughs> um, and I trained her with a three-year-old running around the background and a husband in and out asking if I was done on the <laughs> zoom because he needed me to watch him so he could make his phone calls for his job since we were all stuck together mm -hmm. um she's been great and um it's super nice to have somebody who can kind of be in the background and do um little things and you can kind of step away and not not have to do that all the time yeah that's awesome that was one of the questions i have is like you know, going along with that, I'm wondering if that's it. What is the single most important thing that has contributed to your growth that you can like attribute specifically? Um, in terms of volume, it's definitely the prep center. Mm -hmm. um, I think in terms of being able to focus where it counts um, is, is discipline. Like it, it takes consistency. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, so I would say consistency and patience. Yeah. I love that you said that. That's my favorite word. I'm like, some people are like, oh, it's this tool. It's this tool. I hired this out. I hired that. You're like consistency. I love it because you know what, whether you do 15 minutes a day or an hour a day or eight hours a day, it consistency is really what counts because I think the most important thing that people need to just hear and let sink in is that the results that you're getting today are representation of what you've been doing six months ago, a year ago, not necessarily what you did yesterday is what your result is today. It is the accumulation of, of time and energy put together to create the results you're having now. So if you want to have results in 10 years or five years or next year, today is the day that you have to do that work. So I love that you said that because it's that's a skill and something that every single person, regardless of education level or geography or any sort of thing, can be like, I can be consistent if anything else. So I love that that was your answer to that. Now, do you have any special milestones that you're really proud of in the, the past few years of just like having a moment in time where you remember, you feel like, oh, this is awesome or like a happy dance or anything like that? Yeah, I've had a couple. Um, you know, I 
I took a maternity leave starting in uh, June of 2021. Um, and that was definitely different. Um, being self-employed, you can't completely step away ever. Um, but I was super proud that I was able to maintain my business on the listings that I had established. And I really was able to pull back quite a bit. You know, I was um, working, you know, maybe um, for part of it, five to 10 hours a week and for a good chunk of it, five hours or less a week. Um, and most of that was just set, spent um, dealing with the people that are helping me. So making sure that my VA um, had all the tasks out written out for her and then making sure that communication with my prep center um, was going okay and that they didn't run into any problems. Um, but that was, was really satisfying to know that like I could maintain my business and step back and work so much less. Um, now I couldn't do that forever because listings come and listings go, right? Yes, they um, do. <laughs> but, um, that's what I needed then. And I was able to set myself up to do that. Um, and I've also, um, uh, really enjoyed this past summer. I had a listing takeoff. It was super fun. Uh, it was the first time outside of Q4 that I've done over 25, uh, grand in a month. Awesome. That is which a is super milestone. fun. I feel like that's a really hard threshold for a lot of people to cross over like that above that $300,000 mark is, yeah, it's like the next level. It is. You are so next level, girl. I'm so excited. It's really true. There's a couple of milestones that I have heard over time from dealing with clients and talking with people so much about this. It's like uh, they're the first milestone people really struggle with is like a plateau is like 5,000 a month and then the 10,000 a month. And then when you break that 25, it's like that's where the, the golden nuggets, you really start thinking, I got this figured out. Now it's a lot more of just like making sure all the parts are moving in the right direction and things like that. So I love to hear that you are hitting those milestones and outside of Q4, because we all know, let's be real, like Q4 is just a rocket fuel most of the time, even if it, even from a small scale, you can usually sell so much more October, November, December than any other month. So an outside of Q4 high month is probably like the one of the best ones I've heard. I know recently, um, we had like one of our highest months ever, a six figure month in outside of Q4. And that's just never really happened to us before. It was just a certain product that we kind of put out there that was one of those. It was just like, oh my gosh. Um, so that was, I remember that moment as well. I was just thinking, oh my gosh, is this possible outside of Q4? And it certainly was. So I was like, okay. I mean, that was like a one-time deal. I think it was May. Um, and so I was like, okay, that's, that's working. Um, but that's awesome. Okay. So like you mentioned a couple of things, the struggle is real. And um, as your, how has your business like evolved and changed? I know the problems that we have in the beginning aren't the problems we have when we, we have growing pains, right? So tell us a little bit about how you've evolved and changed over time in the past four years. Um, sure. So um, I think as you grow and evolve, the part of the process, your processes need to change with you. So um, you know, when you're, you first start out, especially with writing new listings, there's a whole lot of um, trial and error and um, kind of figuring out just how to manipulate, well, not manipulate, use Amazon to be effective. And once you kind of get that figured out, then you really need to start focusing on um, the other part, right? So like, Yes, I can do this keyword research and I see the numbers, but once you start to learn what those mean in the long, long run for a listing and, and kind of how um, that changes and how to work with those changes really makes the difference between having a bundle that does great for six months versus a bundle you can carry for, for two plus years. Um, and that's how you see real growth, I think, like. Um, so you're not constantly um, starting from scratch. Are you in a niche or are you kind of a jack of all trades? I'm right now I'm in a niche. Um, I was a little bit broader before COVID and I found the struggles I was having with some of the suppliers where I was using less 
the time I was putting in to fix those problems just wasn't paying off because it wasn't as many listings. So um, my supplier sat, number of suppliers actually got smaller with COVID um, because there was only one of me and um, it was just the payout wasn't there in terms of um, dealing with, you know, I, I was up at like six or seven suppliers dealing with all their problems and trying to juggle juggle their problems, which I think is what we all did, right? Like a stock was coming and going or getting stuck or whatever mm-hmm. the answer was, we were trying to find different, ans- you know, different ways to, to, to go around it. And doing that with seven people or seven companies just wasn't, wasn't, uh, it's not a good use of time. <laughs> no, it's not. It's like, if I can take my biggest supplier and figure out how to be really successful with all of that product, it will produce the same results almost. Yes. With a lot less stress. You guys don't miss <clears throat> that. Do not miss. That was just glossed over so quickly, but like we have to go back to that and just be like, okay, you can become successful with one vendor. I promise you. I promise you. If you there's so many products in catalogs that if you really do the proper research, you don't need four or five different vendors and suppliers. Although, you know, a lot of us have those. The, the more ASINs that you have and the, the bigger your business, the more you're you're gonna have to tap into those. But the reality is less is more. If you have two or three good, solid vendors that you can work with, you need nothing else. It's true. Um, and it also lends itself to helping increase your margins. Um, the product discount I get with my largest supplier um, is not something I could sustain because of the volume I do with them across seven seven suppliers. I would need a huge business loan to be able to spend what I'm spending with that largest supplier across everybody. Um And I think as, as things are tightening up, you know, we've, we're at the point like shipping costs have increased. We've seen those fees get passed down to us from Amazon right now. Like that extra 10% that I 10 or is in some cases it's 20 that I get over somebody else who might just be purchasing, you know, a few items from someone every month really makes or breaks my, my, my profit margin and my return on my investment. Absolutely. The deeper you can go with the same vendor, the more discounts that you get. I know I have one particular vendor and they have like six levels of discounts. And once you reach a certain level, you get the top, I mean, you get so many more perks and benefits. And occasionally they give us emails that say, Hey, this is, you know, this exclusive benefit only for these top tier people. And here's all the stuff that you have access to before we release it. It's like early catalog release. Those yeah, it's are the awesome. Best. <laughs> Yeah. And then you can get in and you can, you know, do your research and buy quantities you want and you get them first. If you buy them first, you get them first, usually, you know, Um, whereas people that purchase at the end of a seasonal purchase period, you know, you might have to wait till they get their second, second string of stock in. And right now that's a big deal. It is that second string of stock is six weeks late right now. And then you're, you know, a week before the holiday. Lord have mercy. We won't even go there. We, we yeah. can have a whole episode talking about the problems of last year's Q4 and the shipping and the, the stock issues. Yeah, I believe I have... we got we got uh, um, $10,000 of inventory for Halloween two weeks after Halloween. Yeah, I got mine. I got a decent sized chunk of my pre-order for Halloween um, a week and a half. So it wasn't even... I didn't even send all of it in because I knew it wouldn't sell because by the time Amazon receives it and does their transfers, it was, we were on to Thanksgiving. (laughs) The struggle is real, but you know what? So are the solutions. You know what? When we're in business and we have these problems, we, I mean, we both could have been like, okay, I guess I quit now because we spent this money on Halloween and now it's all gone. I guess we'll quit. No, it's the solutions are there. If we look for them, we have to get creative and we have to figure it out. So, um, one question, I mean, I always ask this because I think it's really important for listeners or new bundlers or people that are considering bundling, like, have you had a bundle bust? One that was just a complete oh, flop. If that you haven't like- had a bundle bust, you're not doing something right. It means you're not taking enough risk. Um, yes, absolutely. I still, I, you know, like every season there is something that makes me bite my nails. Um, you know, and I've, I have started to steer away from very narrow seasonal things. So um, quick holidays like uh, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, those are super short selling periods. I have steered more towards, when I say seasonal, I mean like 
late spring through early fall type of season, you know, where you're getting the whole summer plus a little bit on either end or, you know, fall that can go all the way through Thanksgiving. So your, your broader range. But I think anytime you um, bring something new to the market, and I, it's especially, I think, getting a little harder with um, Amazon's timetable as that has expanded, right? Like mm-hmm. I remember in 2017, I could ship in at FBA shipment and it would all be available for sale within 10 to 12 days. And that's not true anymore. You have to plan ahead farther now. So, um, but yeah, no, I've, I've got a listing right now where I'm like, okay, where's this going? Like, we're kind of on the edge. I should start to see this, like at least pick up a little. And I'm looking at my business reports going, okay, like be a little more patient, be a little more patient, like put a date on the calendar and decide that you're going to start changing things then. Um, because sometimes it just doesn't work. And it's not even that you did something wrong, just that the 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 skies didn't align or maybe there was a hiccup with Amazon that you're not privy to. Absolutely. And I think that there's so many people that are beginners that maybe have tried a bundle and they're like, oh, my first bundle was a total flop. I'm like, you're right. Most of us's first bundle is a total flop. Uh, You know, when Amy was here for so long, I remember her telling that story too. She's like, my first bundle was a total dud. She's like, didn't sell one unit at all of it. And she goes, I had no idea what I was doing, but I was willing to give it a shot. And each time you give it a shot, you get better at something. And so maybe by your third or fourth bundle, you're like, oh, I'm getting some sales. And then some people just like, their first bundle, they're like, this is the best one I've ever done. My first one was the best one. (laughs) Either way, we've all had bundle flops and what we learn from them is much more valuable than the, than the actually the bundle itself. Sometimes what we learn from the mistakes are much more important than anything that you could have gotten. If you knocked it out of the park the first time, you kind of have to learn and, and get a slow process. No, that's absolutely true. And I think it's also true that, um, you remember it better also, um, you know, cause we can all take the time to look and see what we learn, but like, there are some mistakes you make that like get burned into your memory and that's okay. Like, um, and you never do it again. Well, and those are the most important ones. Cause I think we learn much more from failure or flops or just like making mistakes than we actually do from winning because with winning, you're like, Oh, I've got this, you know, it mm-hmm. almost creates a false sense of confidence at first be like, okay, sure. I can do this. No problem. I recently had a client that did that. Her very first bundle was such a success. And she's like, okay. So she went and created four more and then made some critical mistakes with the four more that it was like, we got to back up and start over. And it was like, good thing. They weren't all terrible, but like, like there was something like that. So it's just interesting to say that it's time and consistency yeah. and practice. All right. Now let's be real. I'm just going to get real here. What is the biggest challenge you're facing right now in your business? Supplier issues. I'm back to um, stuff just getting delayed. Um, and I feel like suppliers are, are producing less at the moment. Um, so getting ahead of that is, is something that I'm struggling with because I, um, coming off that maternity leave and it ended up being four months longer than I had planned, um, because of, uh, capacity restrictions within our childcare system here in Connecticut that were still in place at the beginning of, of 2022, um, that I've, I struggled with feeling like I was so far behind because of that extra time I spent away um, that not only did I need to catch up, but then the constraints of supply chain made me feel like I needed to be even further ahead. Hmm. Um, and so it's it's been a good lesson um, in not only being patient, but also learning just to let some things go that um, when you're trying to solve a problem that you have no control over, sometimes you just have to walk away and put your energy somewhere else. I love that. So can you I, get more specific about that? Like just, yeah. walk through some sort so of like- I have, I had a listing, which, um, we're on, I think year number three with, um, here and, you know, uh, um, I went moderately deep at the beginning. I didn't take a huge risk, but I didn't, I didn't only send in um, 12, you know, mm-hmm. I sent in, I think maybe 
somewhere between like 56 and 96 units. It went really well. I was able to replenish it for two months. And then um, my supplier was just out of, out of product and there wasn't going to be any, even though um, it was part of their uh, year round collection. Um, it wasn't going to be year round that year because it was 2020. So <laughs> I know that's what oh. we have to say. Like we want to run a race 2020. Like, yes. We just like forget that that ever happened. Except for now we're feeling all the ripple effects of two years of crazy, right? Yeah. So the following year, I, I went big. I knew it was going to do well. Um, I hadn't seen a lot of people come in. It was a little bit in, uh, tighter niche, um, narrower market. So I went bigger. Again, did great, sold out, had to wait months. Mm. you know so this year I went even bigger and I'm still in the same bucket <laughs> did did phenomenal in the spring I had enough to get me through and now I've been like bits and pieces like I ever thought I've, of raising the price a little bit to make a little bit more money on it so that you can like, stay at stock longer um yes and I I have done that and I am um, I I found the point at which people really started I what I assume is doing a lot more research after they look at my listing because the price was so high yeah so I I feel like I have raised it to the point where it's at I'm the not, threshold here, right? I'm at the threshold of, of turning people off mm -hmm. um for what it is and you know I've I did a lot of work this summer I um really concentrated on looking at my numbers and figuring out um how to work my cash flow a little better. So when the certain parts of that bundle were in stock, I could go purchase more than I probably normally would, right? Pre-2020, I would have just assumed that I would be able to get it in two months. Now you, I'm buying- um, Six for, months of quantity? Uh, not quite that much, <laughs> just because my bank account can't handle Doesn't that. allow. <laughs> but, but three to four- you know, because it's hard when you're doing bundles. Sometimes you've got a bankroll part of it um, up front before you can even send it in because you're waiting for other pieces to come into stock. Um, I went and did some retail arbitrage for one of the pieces. I wasn't going to wait four months. Like I can give up three or four dollars profit because it's only one part of a bundle and um, keep it in stock, which ends up being better for you in the long run um in terms of keeping amazon's algorithm happy so yes i know that the the struggle for 2022 for us too has been the single biggest struggle has been out of stock and then trying to uh reload the listings once we're back in stock because it's almost like oh you're at the top you're number one page one and then you're out of stock and now you're page 212 and no one can find you until you're back in stock so we've had some we've had some um playing around of certain listings to do that so stock issue as well um you know thanks for sharing that and being so honest because you know what even though no matter where we are in business there's always pain points and there's always things where we're gonna have to be challenged to figure out different things um and the good news about product is that if you have some you always have multiple options of of getting rid of it one way or the other selling it individually liquidating putting it in a bundle um so if you have something to sell you're not quite out all of the money no and i think people need to not be afraid to do that um when I first started doing bundles um, and doing bundles at a price point, um, you know, where they were selling above $25, um, I had some flops and um, pulling them back and, you know, being able to sell three of the four or four of the five components and um, breaking even while at the time felt a little bit like a failure um, I now see that not only did I get to learn, but I broke even. So I got to learn for free. You don't get Absolutely. to learn for free very often anymore. No. Um, you know, all I was out was my time, um, which is valuable. But I think if you don't have the mindset that you're going to have to learn things when you start something new, like a business, um, you're not going to be successful. It's just um, making mistakes is, is part of the learning curve. 
That's right. And making, you know, when you make, make mistakes, I say make them early and make them often so that the sooner you can correct yourself. And I love what you said there. It's like, you got to make all these mistakes for free. Um, that's really so important because once you learn and it's it, breaking even is huge for me. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I did all that. I did a trial and error and I broke even. That means that I know better what to do next time. Like there's only room for improvement since then. <laughs> Okay, what is one of what do you have? What is your goal right now? What do you have a major goal right now that you're working towards? Um, I am working towards uh, more consistency from myself in terms of um, uh, focusing on the business. So um, I don't think it's any secret summer is a nice time not to be working. Mm -hmm. Um, so back to school, I need to refocus. I, I need to, um, like I was a little lazy with my bookkeeping over the summer. Mm -hmm. Um, I was maybe too apt to take off an hour early, um, mm -hmm. when it was nice out or stuff like that. So I'm, um, looking forward to just refocusing, being extra disciplined and, building that consistency because I know with that consistency it will pay off it just takes some time it's not I, I'm gonna challenge you for next year because now you have an entire year to think and plan about it you should take next summer off just like your maternity leave <laughs> I know it's hard because that's when we do all of our q4 prep right <laughs> yeah but no I feel like I um that would be difficult for me I think taking off like I feel like if I get to June like by June, you can I, the way my suppliers work, I have to basically be done with ordering for the year by June, which sounds crazy if you're just starting, but, um, as you need larger quantities and more things, you, the earlier you have to buy them. Um, I feel as and early is. buy discounts, right? I mean, yeah. a lot of, a lot of suppliers offer, Hey, if you buy Christmas stuff by like March 1st, you, you can, can have an extra seven to 10% off. Yes, and guess more. what? That makes a difference at the end of the year. 10% is the difference between someone else making money and someone losing money. <laughs> Absolutely. And 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 having a little bit of extra wiggle room if if you need to do something differently. Like if you find that maybe your research wasn't so great and you need to spend a little on PPC, that 10% is that. Um, if you don't have that 10%, then it's really coming out of your paycheck which nobody wants to do. No, no one wants to give that up. Right. For sure. Well, I appreciate you being here and sharing all of these things so candidly. I know that one more question I have is really just more of like the mom side, like as having little ones at home still and all that kind of stuff. What, um, what is your best either tool or resource or anything that you use to just like manage all the things? Um, it's a calendar. It's putting it in writing. Um, I have found that I am not so great at remembering everything anymore. Um, so I, I keep a calendar and it's messy. It's not pretty. Um, it was behind me. I took it down because it, it's, it's not something I would want everybody to see and that's okay. Um, but like, not only am I keeping track of the who, what and where and the time, um, in terms of shuffling between activities and family gatherings and school, um, I don't know, activities and, and assignments and stuff. Um, but I, I put my stuff on there too. Like there'll be a big red mark, you know, seasonal order due. Mm -hmm. Um, just so like, sometimes I get it so early that I get real excited about it. And then there's fires to put out and I kind of forget. So it's in red on the calendar, like seasonal order due with X supplier. Um, and then I can look and I see it like, um, cause it gets buried in the email as much as I'd love to say I have a zero email inbox. Um, does anybody have that? I it's a great that. goal. I know people that do, but, um, I also think that they then spend a lot of time going to try and find things. Yeah. <laughs> so not, it is a fabulous goal and it's always good to make sure you're getting rid of the stuff you don't need. Um, and file, you know, and you can file the things you do, but just moving them out of your inbox doesn't make them done. <laughs> and 
I don't do my seasonal orders in one day. I don't, you know, I don't think if if you're really trying to build a whole catalog and being able to have a $25,000 month, um, unless you really want to go all in on one thing, you need, you need more than a day. So it stays on my to-do list. So it stays in my inbox. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's really, I, I live and die by the calendar too. If it's not there, I mean, calendars and sticky notes is about it. Like mm-hmm. my kids know if they need something important, they have to put a sticky note on my computer screen. Otherwise it gets lost or gone. And we even upgraded now because like there's four adults here. Two of my children are adult children. And then my other one is younger, but we all have access to like, we were implementing a new like list for the family, right? Cause the grocery list and the things people are out of and everyone eats different things and has different, you know, stuff like that. So we're a like, to keep track of it's so much. And, if like, everybody paper... expects you to do it. Yes. It's crazy. And the paper list that we always have, we make these grocery lists and we talk about family meal plans and who's going to be home for what meal and all this stuff because everyone works a different schedule. And so recently we've upgraded our productivity with the list making even because we're like, okay, Jessica is going grocery shopping. And she's like, well, what's on the list? And I'm like, well, here's the list, but we haven't got anything from Benjamin or Allie and what they need and all this stuff. So I'm like, we implemented the any list. It's an app that everyone can get. And then if you need something on the list, you add it to the collective list and everybody has access to it and that's awesome. make notes and everything. So that's kind of our newest little fun resource tool that we're like, okay, we can be organized. We can have a meal plan and not run out of stuff and have everybody happy without, um, without losing those things off of there. So, all right. One last and final question here is what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone that's starting with bundles? Oh, that's a great one. Um, know that you're going to make mistakes, but do it anyway. Um, you've got to start somewhere. Um, and, um, don't be so afraid that you put yourself into a place where, um, you're doing a lot of work for very little. I think, um, one of the great things I got from going to the workshop, um, was the confidence to go a little bigger. Um, I have worked on raising my average selling price over the last two years. Um, I think it's a healthy, like $35 right now. Yeah. Um, love that. So I, you know, and I know you say this, but like buying three things for a dollar and making a listing is exactly the same amount of work as buying three things for $5 each and making a listing. The only difference is the size of that profit margin. So don't be afraid. Um, you know, you probably don't want to start your first bundle with a, a cost of goods at a hundred dollars, but I also wouldn't be afraid to spend 20. Um, if you can make it happen, um, you know, of course, everybody starts with different things. I did retail arbitrage to, to build up that bucket. Mm -hmm. And then I took some of that money and I put it into bundles, but, um, it is really true. Like you're not doing anything differently, um, based just solely on the cost of the item. So don't be afraid to try a little bigger so you can get a little more back. Absolutely. And again, I will echo that and say, continue and start from the beginning, paying yourself something, even if it's a weekly pedicure or something like that for you to be able to reward yourself for the work. I see so many people work for two or three years and like, I have yet to take a paycheck. And I'm like, you have a really expensive hobby then. That's what you have. You're not earning your profit and keeping it and paying yourself or building a retirement or something, which is something I want to echo back to what you said very early on when we were talking was um, really what what this business has allowed you to do outside of business. Like, what are some of the benefits that you've seen in your lifestyle that have changed because you're you're running a well-oiled machine? Um, I have, so geographically where we am, I have had a lot of challenges in terms of getting things for the household. And I am the household purchaser. That is just the role that I play. Um, so like I, I go to three different grocery stores every week because I walk in and I can't get things. And we have some people with food allergies. So there's some specific things. It's like, take it or don't have it. Um, 
you know, I need a certain brand of something because that's the one that meets the requirements. Um, so while it may not have be my favorite way to spend my time, I at least have the time to spend, um, on that, um, which I think makes everybody else's life a little easier because then we're not, um, there's not a ton of change and then people aren't going without. Um, and I do love the time that I've been able to be available for the, um, the things that come up for my kids. Um, I have been able to volunteer in my son's classroom a little bit. I, um, get to be involved in their extracurricular activities. Um, and I, I know that that's, that's, something that a lot of people can't do. And I feel very fortunate to be able to do that. It's such a big blessing when we have enough flexibility and time freedom to do the things that we love doing, because that's why, I mean, we, we do business for some sort of fulfillment and the fulfillment there could be financial for a lot of people, but it can also be a a personal fulfillment that, that, I mean, I don't know about you, but I also feel a personal fulfillment knowing that all of the energy that I'm putting into my business goes right back to my own family. And even if Absolutely. it's just, even if it's just like my daughter this year, um, we, she's been in dance for several years now. And this year she, she tried out for the competitive dance program and she was gratefully accepted to that program, which cost comes with a really big price tag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, but I was so thankful that she gets to do something that she absolutely loves and excels at. And that it's something that our family dollars are going directly towards that something she loves, something we love to support her in. And knowing that, that my energies are, are spent on those things or as simple as the mortgage or as simple as the fact that like when she gets off school today, I'm free to be here for her, to make a snack, to have a cuddle, to listen to some drama that happened at school, whatever that is. And um, that my time is what is the most valuable to me that I'm able to spend most of it doing what I love. So that's definitely the benefit for me as well. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, it's amazing how it, having that available will change your mindset. Um, and I think, um, I remember um, before I left my full-time job, looking at the calendar and just going, oh my God, I haven't had any time off that I haven't spent taking care of something for somebody else. Mm. Um, And being able to like say, okay, it's been a bad week or um, it's been a really busy uh, several weeks. I need, I need two hours when nobody else is home to do something I want to do and to be able to have the freedom to do that. So then I am able to give back to other people. Yeah. That Um, reminds me of like the, the scenario they always talk about in airplanes where like you cannot help others mm -hmm. until you put your mask on first and then help your children or whoever else. It's like, you can't be the best version of you if you're not taking care of you, that you don't have that time where, where nobody needs anything from you. No one's expecting you to be responsible for anything. And you can just have time that you own to, I don't know, sleep on the couch or work in your garden or, you know, do whatever it is that you enjoy doing. That's literally no demands from any human would be fantastic. Right. Yes. I think, I think as, um, caregivers, whether you're a mom or a dad, or you're, even if you're, you know, taking care of uh, aging parents, aging or, parents um, yes. you know, someone with special needs or even yeah. a lot of animals. <laughs> yeah. That, that, um, sometimes you get so busy looking at all the things you have to do that you forget that, um, you need, you have needs too. So, um, it has, has been a a major blessing to be able to, when I feel like it's too much to just be able to be in control of the, the, the clock. So I can say, Hey, I'm checking out here. Um, and I also think that like, it also, um, in doing that, I'm not really losing a lot because I come back refreshed. I come back being able to concentrate and quite frankly, do better work faster when I start from a place um, where I've met my needs. That is, if if you've heard nothing else, 
hear that again, rewind it, press that little back button and just listen to that again and let it sink in. That's what I'm going to do. You know why? Because why is Monday my most productive day of the week? Because I just had two days of pure no work that I could just do family stuff. Or, I mean, I literally have, I claimed my weekends like many years ago where I was like, I'm not, or I, the first few years of building my businesses, I was kind of a workaholic and I burned myself out real quick and then realized that like, I can't operate this way. I have to have operating hours and I have to have weekends where I can just be a person and be a mom and a human and like, not just that, but just myself, not even the mom or the wife role or any of that, but just be like, I'm claiming these days for me. And after Mondays are so productive for me because I claim my weekends and I love them and I plan things I love doing. And I feel refreshed and ready to face the week because I've literally taken that time for myself. So y'all, if you're not doing that and you're doing 60, 80 plus work hours or you're working a nine to five and then double hustling at night, I applaud you for that. But also I need you to know that you can't run like a train like that for a long time. You need to plan time where you can refresh yourself and come back ready to, uh, I don't know, be inspired and ready to, to really be at your best. Yeah. And I think people, when you take the time to do that, you'd be amazed at how, how well you can do something. Um, you know, going back to like figuring out where your effort is going to pay off. Um, and, and rest is an applicable use of your time. Yes. For the people okay. in the back that didn't hear that, rest, rest, sleep, relaxation, taking some time for yourself, taking time off actually helps you become more productive, not less. You're not stealing time from your business when you're resting. You're actually recharging your batteries because your batteries can't run. It was, I was talking to someone the other day and they said something about breakfast and it was like, oh, I just never eat breakfast. Isn't that? I'm like, would you get in your car? Not, no, I'm not telling everyone they have to eat breakfast. I'm simply saying that like you listen to your body and do those things and whatever. But it was interesting. It's like, would you get in your car in the morning and with an empty tank and expect you to get it from here to there? Like it doesn't run on nothing. I'm like, so how are you going to, you know, fuel your day without doing that? And so it's one of those things where, you know, we need that fuel. And part of that fuel is recharging, plugging ourselves into something that really lights our soul on fire. And some of us, that's business. <laughs> I know for me, I love business. I love doing business. I love creating. I love ideas. But I've channeled that into multiple different things so that when I'm not actually doing business, that I still feel all the same fulfillment just with from a different perspective of the creativity. So, Absolutely. well... This has just been a wealth of just like truth bombs and just things that people can really hold on to and, and take throughout their week. You guys, if you have to listen to it a couple of times, take some notes and just even if you have one takeaway, think about that takeaway for the rest of this week and just let it sink into your brain. Let it go over and over and over again and just do something that will help you go because these are the success stories that we have. They're not always sunshines and rainbows. There's ups and downs and there's a slow trajectory. But if you've learned anything at all, it's consistency, discipline, and recharging yourself so that you can be at your best. So Ryan, thank you again for coming back to the show and sharing more of yourself and more of the story. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing and you're here with me. So I really appreciate that y'all. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. I know that there's lots of other podcasts to listen to and your time is precious. I pray I never waste it. Um, join me again, same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.